Hello guys, Sarvik Mande here from Indian Basic School, and we are watching Basic to Advanced Flip series inside of Footney. If you like the content, make sure you subscribe and join our Facebook page. You can also head to our website and check out our courses on Hoodney, Phoenix FD, Film Effects, etc. And book yourself a completely free 7 days demo class. And watch by yourself how some of the students they have made to the top studios in just 2 months of our course. Alright guys, welcome back to the part 2. And in this part we are going to see like how we can add velocities to our flip simulation. Okay, so first of all why do we even need velocities? So let's say if we want to throw our liquid in a certain direction. All right. So right now you can see that the liquid is just falling straight from our uh, geometry, and that is just due to the gravity. So I will just go into my right view uh, by pressing spacebar and four. So this is my orthographic view, and what I'll do is I will I just want to increase this uh, increase the size of this container, something like this, and now I want to go in the top view. So spacebar and two. By that you can go into the top view and i just want to like increase the bound of my uh, this box all right now i want to just i'll just go back into my main view by pressing spacebar and one or you can just do it same from uh, in the set view from here all right so once i've done that uh, okay i'll just make it a little bit taller okay all right now i'll just go back into my soft view and here i will just add a transform in order to uh, transform my uh, this duck so you can put it here or you can put it here it doesn't really matter and now i just want to see the bounds of my flip box so i will just go and click on the show all objects so i can see my uh, top level also all right so now we are having something like this okay so let us start by uh, start adding velocity so the easiest way and the most forward way and the most efficient way to do that is just to use a sop uh, tool it's known as point velocities and I'll just add a point velocity over here and <clears throat> what I need to do is uh, instead of compute from deformation right now it's set to compute from deformation and that is for calculating the velocities I will set it to set to value all right and right now the value is set to 0 0 0 so this is x y and z so let's say if I want to uh, add some velocities on the uh, like you can you can have a help from here let's say if I want to add some velocities on the z axis so I can type, uh, let's say three over here, but you won't see them. Okay. So we'll see them. What you need to do is make sure your flag is set over here and click on this. I, uh, which means information and you will see we are, we will have an attribute for the velocity and this is a position attribute. So it will just show the position of your points and make sure your visualizer uh, visualization is also turned on. So right now we are just seeing the points so I can click it back and I can click on the V. So now we will have the velocities like obviously we were having the velocity, but now we can visualize that. And if you want to turn them off, just click on this visualization and it will just turn it off. And let's say if I uh, play it, you will see uh, now the liquid is going to get thrown uh, in this certain direction. Let's say if I wanted to throw it on the uh, this side, I can just put it to like, like, let's say minus three, I can put it to minus six. So the symbol plus or minus represents the direction and the value present represents the magnitude of the direction so you can see we are having some losses in this direction all right all right so now let's see if i uh, right now you can see again uh, the liquid which is coming out it's like very you know uniform so i can add some noise to it so if we go into this curl noise i can add curl noise and once again to visualize it again i can turn on the visualization and you can see we are having some noise over here you can scale the noise from here. The pulse duration represents the frequency, like how fast that noise is going to change. So let's say I will hide other objects in order to stop the simulation. And right now the pulse duration is set to one. So it's going to change on uh, every frame or something like that. And let's say if I set it to three, basically it will become a lot slower. And if I put it to like even less, it will become even slower. All right. So, uh, <clears throat> Like, let's just set it to uh, one itself as of now. Okay. And the sole size tells the scale of the noise, like how big the noise will be. So you can put it to like point, uh, point 0.3, you will have very high frequency noise. And if you increase it, you will have a very low frequency noise. So you go like this. All right. Okay. So let's just turn it off and I'll just put it to one as of now. And let's see what happens. And okay. So if you want to do, if you want to see the simulation in the SOP level, you can turn this show all objects. Show so it, it's going to show the 
uh, DOP level also, and it's also going to do this simulation for you. Okay, so you will see we are going to we are having some breakups in our uh, liquid now. Okay, and let's say if I want to increase it, I can increase it by the scale. Let's say if I put it to four, so it's going to increase the intensity of my um, you know the noise. So now you can see the liquid is uh, breaking more. So let's say uh, if you're doing a simulation of river, which we are going to see in later chapters, we'll always have some velocities, some noise in our emitter in order to make it look more chaotic. Okay. All right, so I can just put it back to two or anything. So that is it like for the point velocity. So uh, actually there are a lot, a lot of ways to add velocities. And uh, I've seen the students, they are getting confused between like which way to use. So there's no right or wrong way. So this is like one way and you can just always use it. It's more efficient, it's fast, everything. There are other ways also. So I will just remove it by, by pressing Y, you can just draw this uh, line and you can just cut your notes, like the connection of your notes. I'll just put it back over here. And right now you can see in the null, we are not having any velocities. When we had this, uh, when we connect this point velocity, we are going to have this V attribute. And in turn, this V attribute, it's going to get added into our uh, volume source and it is fed to the flip solver. So flip solver knows that every particle say every particles are having losses. So I'll just cut it off and put it over here and just connect it back. Now let's say if I want to manually create velocity so that you can also do something like that. So let's say I can add a attribute create. So as I said, this velocity, this is nothing but just an attribute. So I can create that attribute myself. So as soon as I add this attribute create over here, I can name it V. You need to make sure that you name it V only because this is like a predefined attribute. So as soon as you name something V, it will know that it's a velocity and your flip solver will also recognize that attribute as a velocity and it will just put it into the um, right part. All right. So it's a velocity and the class is set to points because we want to add uh, velocities to the points, the type. Uh, it's not a float velocity is always a uh, three directional. So it's a vector so make sure you set it to vector. And now we will have this value X, Y, Z. So ignore these ones and ignore this one. Uh, it's just X, Y, Z. So let's say if I add, uh, you know, <clears throat> five over here and if I turn on the visualization, you will see we're getting the same thing. Okay. So once we click over here, we will get the same thing. Uh, we are getting uh, a magnitude of five uh, on the x axis. If I put it to zero, nothing will happen. If I put five over here, we will get the same thing on the y axis. And let's say if I <clears throat> do the same thing with the z, we will have the same thing like that, which we were having over here. So instead of five, I can also write minus five. So we will, it will just flip that direction. And let's say if I start the simulation now, <clears throat> you're going to see we will have velocities or points. All right. So the next part is like how we can add noise to these velocities because here everything was like just built into one thing. So once again, if you go inside, it's doing the same thing. It's setting a, um, it's creating a V attribute uh, over here. It's computing it. Then more or less it's, yeah, again, it's going to add some noise. <clears throat> so we can do it ourselves. All right. So once we created this attribute V, now I can just add a attribute noise. So this attribute noise is going to add noise to our pre-existing attribute. So when we add this over here, instead of CD, I want to set it to V. So attribute name. <clears throat> so this is like where I want to add the noise. I want to add on the V. All right. And uh, I'll just turn it on and see. So by default, this is set to the uh, positive values. The range, uh, they are set to positive values. We need to just change it to zero center. So we will have it in, uh, in a bi-directional way. Okay, now I can just increase it and you will see more or less we are going to get the same thing. Again, we have the size over here. Size depicts like how big the frequencies will be. Okay, how big the noise will be, I should say. And then we have inside this uh, animation, this is like pulse duration. Okay, and in this fractal, again, we are going to have roughness and everything. So again, everything is same like what we're having over here. So both of them, like they are same thing. You can either use this way or you can use the point velocity way itself. It, just to remove the confusion which people are having regarding like what is the right way to create an attribute. And there's no right or wrong way. You can just use whatever you want. Okay, now like, <clears throat> like I can increase the amplitude again. I'll put it to 15. And you will see again, maybe, get, maybe it's a little bit more. Just put it to eight and let's see. Okay. 
So again, we are having the same effect. All right. Okay. So now let's uh, look at one more way to add uh, the same thing. Okay. So again, I will disconnect them and I will just move them over here. I will connect it like this. Okay. And this time I'll use an attribute wrangle. So attribute wrangle, basically this is a, like a where we can type some quotes or expressions. So here, if I want to create an attribute, I can write at add the rate B. So that means I'm uh, referring it to a velocity attribute is equal to now, because this is a vector, whenever we write a vector value, we always need to put them in a curly bracket. So just make two curly brackets. And here we can write whatever values we want. So let's say if I write five comma zero comma zero, that means five on the X axis and zero on the Y and the Z axis and end it by adding a semicolon. So now if I uh, just turn it on and see the visualization again, you can see we are having the same thing. If I put five over here and zero and maybe 10 over here again, it will set on the Y axis. And let's say if I add five or six over here, it will set on the Z axis. And if I put a negative sign before this, it will just flip it. Okay. Again, the same thing. And if I want to add some noise, either we can do it again in the uh, vex thing or only, but there's no point of doing that because we don't, we will have to create every uh, <clears throat> control from here. So it's just better if you add an attribute noise itself. Right? I can just add it over here. Okay. Sorry. I wrote something over here. Okay. So again, you can see uh, because there's a V attribute. We have already created a V attribute over here. So it, it can add a noise over there. And if it's not there, obviously it won't do anything. So <clears throat> now if we play, we'll get something like this. Okay. So, uh, I hope everybody is clear with this, uh, velocity thing. So velocity is just an attribute, which will, uh, give some velocities to our particles so that we can throw them in, in a specific direction. Okay. Now, as you saw in the um, preview, like how we can have this filling effect and after some frame, I can just stop it. Like after some frame, if I just want to stop this filling thing. Okay. So I can go back into my dot net and in the volume source in the activation, uh, it's, it's very easy. So first of all, I'll just disable this condition. I can add a key over here so I can press alt and the left mouse button. So it will just add a key over here. I can go few forward frames. Again, I can press this alt and left key. So again, it will add a key again over here. And in the next frame, I will put it to zero. And again, I will add a key. Okay. So basically what we have done is like, uh, we have animated it. So from here to here, it's one and in the next frame, it's zero. So if we do the simulation now, we will see. So as long this is activation is set to one, it means the volume source is activated and it will just keep on emitting liquid. Okay, so everything will be instanced and as soon as this thing turns to anything less than one or zero, it will just, you know, switch it off. So you will see it's going to switch it off. All right. So that is like one way uh, if you want to uh, manually do it, if you like just hate expressions or there's a simple way, you can just write a very quick expression. I can write dollar F. That means the frame number is less than 50. Okay. So this will only be activated till the frame number is less than 50. And if I, if I just disable the simulation, so disabling simulation will let me, you know, just scroll through the timeline. And if it's enabled, I can, I cannot do that because it will just start calculating everything. Okay. Now, like if I just enable it, it will just start calculating everything. So I'll just disable it. Okay. So if you see, if I click on this activation, you will see it will be set to one until here. And after the, on the 50th frame, it will just set itself to zero. So in turn, we will just have the same fit. Okay. So <clears throat> yeah, so we are getting the same thing. All right. So I hope you guys uh, liked it. And if you have any doubts, you can just ask me. Also, make sure to join our Facebook group and subscribe to the uh, YouTube channel. Okay. And you can also uh, look at the classes that we are giving online. Okay. And thank you. We will see in the next part.